My favorite um, pastime that I used to love is when I was in university, I hosted radio shows. So this is kind of bringing me back to my zone of I love radio. So. You're comfortable with this? I love it. Okay, I'm glad you're Radio is a very powerful medium. So. <laughs> well, people, you know, the thing is, as you mentioned during the break, is that people have to turn to the, the information, the conversation. They have to focus on the voice and what's being said. They have no visual to sort of broaden the uh, sense of trying to connect with a message. So they have to, if they want to hear or understand the message, they have to focus more on our voices. Yes, and it saves me a lot of time because I don't have to put makeup on, get my hair done, you know. Radio, you just come on as you are. <laughs> we, we, we do have a camera in the room, though it's not live. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the intention is that ultimately it's going to get uh, edited and then we can upload it eventually to the radio station. does have a YouTube channel under Voces Latinas, CHHA, 1610 AM. And people can access that in the future, but uh, that's not the priority right now. It's we'll, We will get an audio We just want them to enjoy our yeah. voices at this moment. Well, at least your voice. and <laughs> Then they can get a sense of more understanding about the work that you're doing and your purpose and your intention and the bigger goals, ultimately. Because I would figure that what you're doing is not the end. It's only a start. I hope so. We don't know when the end is, right? <laughs> no. Well, yeah, in terms of, uh, you know, getting as any listeners out there. Well, I think, like I said, you know, you start small, but you think big, right? And with anything that you do in life, you can't just, everybody thinks, oh, I have this big goal I want to accomplish. Okay, but are you walking? Are you crawling? Like, you know, you have to, it's steps, baby steps and right. everything. Yeah, and well, that's the whole thing, that with change, it happens in an incremental way, in a way that people feel safe with it. Yeah. So yeah, they're going through a it's like building a muscle, you know, like, okay, so today I have a challenge to do this or today I have a challenge to host a mayor debate. But I wouldn't have prepared prepare like prepared myself for that unless I've been through some other stuff prior to that, right? So it's almost like with change you have to build a muscle. Like every little bit helps every day and the muscle gets stronger. Right. Stronger. You're getting a more solid foundation. Exactly. Right? And then that you can there's no limitations. No. to what the possibilities are. Absolutely. And, you know, the only limitation is the limitations we place on ourselves. I agree. It's the mind. Mm -hmm. So attitude over, mind over matter, right? Mind over matter. Yeah. You don't mind as matter. <laughs> and it, who cares, anyways? <laughs> of course, though, you have to be inclusive. And you got to recognize that every, not everybody is going to deal with, quote, change the same way. Well, let me tell you something. From my experience, people think you're crazy. Like, when you start to do something that's different than the crowd, right. they're like, whoa, like, who do you think you are? Like, do you think people actually care about this issue? Like, why are you sharing this? You almost, like, so if you're a, a person out there who's thinking about doing big changes in your life, mm -hmm. get ready for people to look at you very weird, which is kind of that space I was talking about. Right. Because many people are not used to that vulnerability or that sharing or that putting yourself out there. Or, or you can do that. Yeah. Why would you do that? Or who do you think you are? Yeah, like, aren't you, you're the same as me. What makes you so special? Nothing. Well, taking a step. Exactly. And it's all in the action step. Right, so, you know, what, what do you, what, you know, how can people know that their involvement with matters in the community will actually make a difference? Well, I always say, any time that you know, someone said, oh, uh, what I do doesn't make a difference, why should I get involved? You know what? It does make a difference. When someone's making a law about your community, when someone is not cleaning the neighborhood properly, or when someone's not involved in your child's school, it makes a difference. If you can just do one action step that gets you closer to a goal that could benefit an entire generation of people, why not? I mean, it may not be a big deal to someone, the fact that I go and, um, you know, do a mayor debate, but you know what, to me it's a big deal because who knows, tomorrow it could be another Somali girl who's running that whole, you know, television network somewhere else, you know, a generation from me, right? Right, you set an example, and for others it can be a motivation, and they can say, oh, well, I can identify with that person. Well, she's very similar to me. She can do it. Why can't I do Why it? Why can't I do it? Mm -hmm. Can be an incentive. And, and I think a lot of times, too, in our community, I'll speak frankly for my Somali community, a lot of the leaders tend to be males, right? So a lot of the young women don't have opportunity to see women in like those type of roles of leadership, mm -hmm. of career achievement. 
So I think it's okay to give a voice to that and to give a space where young girls can say, you know what, I can see myself doing that. So you've obviously gotten a lot of positive stuff. What challenges have you faced with regard to trying to get that voice out in a different way? Um, well, I think the critics always come out of the woodworks, and when the critics have come out, that means you've arrived, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're making a difference, right? And you have a potential to actually affect change. Yes. So there's a sense of threat. Yes. Um, especially, you know, it comes from people that want to hold on to the old ways of thinking. But I always tell those people, you're not my audience. My audience is young Somalis who actually are affected by one, like this, this part of the generation of growing up outside of Somalia. Under, under 30, young, may not be very much involved in their culture, in their religion, but who actually want to embrace and get closer to identifying themselves and as who they are and owning their identity. That's my space of people. I don't, anybody else who's outside of that, I really could care less. I mean, my children, those are the kind of people I want to target. And I would encourage, though, that there's still a space within you. There and is. And an opportunity, <laughs> and I know that, you know, uh, because there's a focus. There has to be a focus for anything. Yes. Well, it's marketing, right? You got to know who your audience is. Right. In community development, we, we use another word that's called outreach. Yes. Going out there and reaching out, connecting with but people. But do we want to develop generation that's already had their time, or do we want to develop the new generation that can possibly impact more change? Because like I remember anybody like when you're in university or you're in you know high school, you're graduating. Those are the young people that have the hunger and desire and the right. time to get and the, involved. And the energy. And the energy. Right. I don't know many 45-year-olds that have the energy to campaign and, and door knock every night like it you know, Brawler does or um, um, Manira. Manira Albuquerque does. Like, I don't know anybody who does that in my community. But I know young women who are excited, energetic, and happy to do that. There is, though, as well, mm -hmm. the experience, yes. wisdom living through experiences or situations that could benefit the younger people as I, well. I totally agree. In sharing that space, yes. But a lot of times what I've found is that um, sometimes young people can get discouraged by the older generation because there's a lot of negativity or we've been through so much trauma in mm -hmm. coming to this country and, and they don't see the value in the change yet, I don't think. But the value in the change is going to come from the young people. That's where the change will happen in the Somali community worldwide. It's not going to happen in the older generation. Only from my experience, because they're not tainted. They and don't have a lot of complex things going on. <laughs> I think the difference would be in terms of trying to get what you're looking for with the younger generation. But we generation. need the older generation. You need, yes. And yeah. so there, it's how it's approached. We need them to get out of the way. <laughs> we need to, to blend and, and enrich both perspectives because in fact you can use some of the older individuals they can get regenerated yes recharged yes because and, and then I've met people like that who actually have that you know that education level where they're excited to embrace the change but there are very few in my community and so yes there's so many individuals especially from my experience with working within the Somali community as well yes oh yes you do work with them. that's great so and I must commend you, you've done amazing work with the Somali community here in Toronto. The young people that I've met that you've impacted, I've seen a difference in their self-esteem and how they interact, especially when it comes to conflict resolution. So I thank you for that space. Well, that was part of a project that was recently completed in April through a uh, not-for-profit agency up in North Etobicoke that uh, was focused on Caribbean, Somali, and South Asian community, which ended up being predominantly of uh, Somali youth, and there were a lot of very motivated individuals, especially in the older of the two groups, the 18 to 25 group, and 24, that uh, they want a sense of still continuing and building on what was started. So hopefully there's something that can be initiated to utilize the assets that these kids have Absolutely. in order to contribute both to the Somali community and the broader community. Because when it does focus on one community, it does benefit. It has ripple effects and consequences within the broader community as well. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I've learned from you also is that, you know, it's community development really is not about staying in your own community either. You need to benefit from other groups and who 
been here a long time who assimilated or actually integrated yeah. and who actually have lived the experiences and learned from that value. You don't have to stick to your own community. You don't have to stay in your own neighborhood or your own house. You can get out. You can interact with people and still keep your beautiful culture, your religion, and be an amazing human being learning from other people. Right. Because those issues, those concerns are not limited to any one group. They're not. They're We're not special. These, all immigrant groups have gone through this. Right. So when, you know, going back to earlier uh, topic and uh, the conversation of the show, where people didn't want to bring to light about some of the issues, those issues are shared by other communities they and are. other ethnic ethnic groups. You know, ironically, the people who watch my show are not, like, there's a lot of non-Somalis, and they say, hey, you know what, I, I'm of Pakistani heritage, and I, my family has a shame about mental illness, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's... Everybody, it's not just the Mali community. Like these issues are just humanity, you know. So what what are some of the topics that you've uh, you've had? What twenty six shows? Twenty six shows. Yeah, we've talked about a lot of different things. Um, one of the biggest ones was mental health. Um, another one that we did recently was gender issues. Mm -hmm. Another big topic in my community is tribalism, which I still think is a terrible disease that continues, and uh, which we need to stop as a community because that's why I say people under the age of 30 who grew up in this country don't have those kind of stigmas going on. So right, that's you. where the change can probably come about. Right. I mean, I mean, some of the youth who were involved in the project uh, that I was involved turning things around with the Somali group is that, yes, they come from Muslim background. They may not wear hijab if they're female and they may not, you know, sit in a box per se, yet they respect that aspect, and that's part of the core, yet they want to engage in other aspects, and it's not about losing things, it's actually about gaining yes. with the integration aspect. Absolutely. Integration is all about showing your identity and knowing who you are, because if you don't know who you are, trust me, you'll get lost in society. We've got to teach our children who they are as Somali, in, in identity. Right. If we don't do that, we'll fail in another generation. Well, because people are always challenging us and questioning us, it's just, you know, especially when they see where are you from? Yes. And because they don't necessarily identify that you're from, quote, here. Mm -hmm. You must be from somewhere else. So what are people supposed to say? I, I mean, that's a challenging um, way to put people on the spot. Yet youth, especially, need to have some context, some confidence to be able to say, yes. this is who I am. And that comes from them being proud of their culture, right? So if all that you've known about your culture is lawlessness or negativity, you're not going to be proud of that. But if people teach you and come from great forefathers, people who fought for freedoms, people who cared, people who actually like built an entire great nation in the continent of Africa, hello, you're, you're winning. And in fact, this is where it's not just to be focused specifically where the Somali community would benefit and be enriched by this information in detail broader community. Yeah, people need to know successes in their community. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. people's eyes have to be opened up, their minds have to be opened up, they have to be able to appreciate that, quote, they're not the only ones. They're not. So, we'll come back, you're listening to Mediation Station on CHHA, 1610, Voces Latinas. A cultural, educational, and musical window that gets us closer to our Latin American roots. Monday to Friday, 2 to 4 p.m., you have a date with 20 Latin American countries. Recorrido Latino Americano. Listen to them from the voice of our community. Radio CHHA, 1610 a.m., Voces Latinas. Visit our website, so you, CHHA, 1610 a.m. Chaz 1610 AM radio is now 24 hours on the air. CHHA, listen to more Latin voices and be with us during late nights. Late nights, call us to play your favorite tunes or leave us a message at CHHA 416 So, okay, I would say something like. Sono Mario, grazie a Voce Latina presento da oltre due anni tutte le sere dal lunedì a venerdì, dalle 11 pomeridiane a mezzanotte la bella Italia, le più belle canzoni degli anni 60 e gli anni 90. Ascoltate e fate ascoltare con gioia, allegria e amore, la vostra musica del cuore. Ciao.
¿Qué le parece disfrutar de unos ricos tamales de cote cerdo? El tradicional cazado, arroz con pollo, delicioso vigorón y mucho más. ¿Sabe dónde lo encontrará? Por supuesto que en el salón de eventos de la parroquia San Lorenzo, cuando estaremos celebrando la independencia de Costa Rica. Sábado 20 de septiembre, desde las 12 del mediodía hasta las 12 de la noche. 2981 Tapering Street. Celebremos la independencia de Costa Rica. Recuerde, sábado 20 de septiembre, entrada gratis. Anúnciate con nosotros. Anúnciate en CHHA 1610 AM. Llama. Llama a nuestro departamento de ventas. 416-782-2953. Y conoce nuestros paquetes publicitarios para anunciarte en la voz de la comunidad. Llámanos 416-782-2953. El Grupo de Voluntarios de la Casa Legislativa de Ecuador en Canadá estará brindando asesoramiento para la afiliación del IES, Instituto Ecuatoriano de la Seguridad Social, interesados a acercarse a la 22 Wendering Drive desde el lunes 18 de agosto a partir de las 3 de la tarde hasta las 8 de la noche o llámenos al Centro Comunitario San Lorenzo, teléfonos 416-782-2953, requisitos, trae cédula de identidad o pasaporte, no importa si está caducado. No falte, le esperamos. 6 y 7 de septiembre se aproxima el evento que tanto esperamos. El chancho, chancho con chaleco. chaleco. Tendremos a los guasos del puerto y el pandero de oro. 2981 de Gaffrey Street. Desde el mediodía hasta que las velas no hagan. Asado a la chilena. Empanadas chilenas. Del blanco y del otro. Bailemos cumbia hasta el amanecer. Con el sonido de la sonora Palacios. Patricio Farfán. Muchachita, muchachita, la peñita. You are listening to Mediation Station on CHHA Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. Welcome back to the program tonight, uh, last segment for the show. Just wanted to let people know that this is a multilingual, multicultural radio station. It's the first license in Canada under both the community banner and also the ethnic banner by the CRTC. So during the day, it's all Spanish language. In the evening, from 8 p.m. to 9, it's English. 9 to 10, it's uh, Portuguese. 10 to 11, it's Tagalog. And 11 to 12, during the week, is Italian. So this, you know, all the programming is not just whatever. It's We all have to work together. Inclusive. Right, yeah. I love that. And re be respectful. You know, even within the Spanish-speaking community, there's a whole range of, let's say, 20 different countries from Central and South America and Spain. And they have diverse cultures. Right. Mm -hmm. So diversity is really critical yes. in order to be effective, to recognize, acknowledge, and work within to provide for positive change. Absolutely. Diversity is number one. I mean, you can learn so much from other people. And I highly, I think one of the best things that I ever did was I went away to university. I didn't live at home. Um, I got to experience different cultures, learn about different things. And it makes you appreciate actually who you are. If you know who you are, you value yourself more. You become more self-aware. Yes. Right? Because we're, I, uh, you know, I'm me in relation to someone else. I have differences in re relation to someone else. And those differences needn't be a barrier or a way to separate us. It actually should be an opportunity for us to enhance and enrich our lives. Absolutely. So what are, what are some of the things you envision as being needed to happen, to have people more connected and caring with matters for themselves and within the community? Well, it's locally, especially in here in Toronto, because um, as you know, my audience is global, so I mean, there'll be yep. Somalis everywhere. But locally, I would highly encourage the Somali community to really get involved in voting, um, in getting out there, in having their voice heard, represented. I mean, it's not a joke to have 100,000 people of your identity living here that can impact the entire election in the city. Mm -hmm. um, clean the neighborhoods, organize, um, get involved more in helping young people. Um, set up organizations that target more of the youth. And not necessarily organizations that are funded, but bring back volunteerism, you know? Let's do a neighborhood cleanup day with our youth. Right, so the idea is to be entrepreneurial in some way, you know? You don't have to wait for somebody else. Right. You can do these things yourself. I started this television show because I had a desire to do something to empower myself and my community. 
you don't have to wait for a government grant. You don't have to wait somebody to give you a handout. You can own it. Mm -hmm. What are your plans with the uh, program, by the way? Can you share anything about that? Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, <clears throat> well, I say, we always pray about this in Islam, say inshallah, right? But um, I hope to definitely take the program global. Um, we realize that it's great here in Toronto, it's a great initiative, but the same issues are shared by Somalis in Minneapolis, in Ohio, uh -huh. in Sweden, in London, you know. So um, my, one of my primary goals is to take the program international and find out great, amazing stories of pioneering Somalis all over the world and teach them to young people that are growing up. And, you know, um, unearth those treasures that are there. Yeah. Right. My goal, and I pray this uh, every day, it's like, I want to walk down in the soil in Somalia and show the wonderful country that we come from to the entire world. Right. So if, if someone recognized an issue, where do you think the first step would be? I mean, you, you said to go out and do something, but if they're not sure really what okay, the possibilities are. Okay, a simple are. issue could be you're walking somewhere and you witness an injustice and you don't do mm -hmm. anything about it. They, so people ignore it. Ignore it. Or they hope someone else goes and fixes it. Right. A simple thing is that you see a parking lot in a you know neighborhood business area that's you know torn up. Why don't you approach the people who own it and say, you know what, we come drive through this parking lot every week. You need to fix that. If you want to collect rent from our neighborhood, you need to recognize and respect the neighborhood and make the place look presentable for our community. If you live in a building where people are basically trashing the building or there isn't a responsive of landlords, you have power. You can simply get a letter written. You can. You can take charge of your everyday life. You don't have to start big. Start with yourself, mm -hmm. your community, who you are, what do you what do you see for your school. Your kids go to school somewhere, you see another kid getting bullied, you can help that. You see another kid maybe having language difficulties that doesn't have resources, you can maybe ask that parent, can I help you? How can I help you today? What can I do for you? And I think that's sharing knowledge is one of the most empowering things that we can do as a community with each other. And the Somali community has been phenomenal. We've survived this disbursement of the world because of helping each other. And I would add and I don't to know that. any other African nation yeah. of, of people that are all over the world like Somalis are. I mean, you can find Somalis in every corner of the globe. That's pretty phenomenal to me. Absolutely. I mean, even up in Norway, right? that comes from networking. Right? <laughs> up in Norway, I mean... The Iceland, Greenland, yeah. China, Malaysia. So just because doesn't South mean it has to be. It can be anything. We are the most adaptable human beings that I know personally. <laughs> and I, I think that, I mean, with change, I and mean, like I said, we are not like against change. I think if we didn't, like if we were not for change, we wouldn't be able to speak all these multi-languages all over the world. I mean, we're speaking Dutch, we're speaking French, we're speaking Italian. Right. And th these are not our heritage languages. Right. So, so that means we are adaptable to change. Now we just got to start looking at the social side of our culture. So what message would you like to leave with the listeners about I just want everyone to know that, you know, we all have a stake in this because if, for me, the stake for me is I have two children and I definitely want them to live in a better world for, of my community. And starting from that means enriching them about their culture, their language, and their religion. And I think if anybody can take a lesson from tonight is don't be ashamed. We have nothing to be ashamed of as Somali people. We are phenomenal human beings and we come from great ancestors. And I think it's just a matter of time of us rebuilding our nation and who we are. But we got to start building ourselves first. And there's so much more potential. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The potential is huge. It's limitless. Thank right? you. Unlimited potential for the world to discover Somali. Right? Yes. <laughs> so uh, if people want more information or they want to get connected with you, what kind of uh, information can you share? Well, we're always online on social media, so you can connect with us on integrationtv.com. You can also connect with us on Twitter. I'm at Hoden T.O. And uh, on Facebook and also on YouTube, my favorite channel, Integration TV. Just type it in. It shows up automatically. So uh, and you can support us by yeah. subscribing to our YouTube channel. Okay, so they do that. And then they're connected with you, and then there's a, an ongoing like conversation, a dialogue of some form. Yeah, I mean, we always pose in different, we post different videos, we talk about different issues, and I'm always amazed how people are just dying to be connected. It's amazing. Like, I'm hearing from Somalis in Scandinavia, I mean, girls in China, and girls that go to school in Turkey. I mean, it's just pretty amazing. <laughs> I, I'm sure when you started up your, your journey, it, you didn't think of that. 
I didn't. I just I started with what I had, and I just let it build. And every day, up more opportunities come. Right. So new information, new ideas, new possibilities. New, new Building change. the muscle, you know. Yeah. Little by little, the muscle's growing. So I pray that we all can connect and inspire young Somalis to, to make a change for themselves first, and then for their world. Thanks for coming uh, here tonight on Sunday night to Thank share you. with us. And Thank you so much for this great opportunity to share my voice. Okay, so we, we will upload this eventually, very soon, to uh, soundcloud.com, and then you'll have a copy, and then you'll be able to share. We'll disperse it all worldwide for you. For you too. For all of us. <laughs> We're all here to help each other. Exactly. Right? Thank you. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. So you've been listening to Mediation Station on CHHA 1610 AM, Voces Latinas, here in Toronto, Canada. And uh, I want to thank Alexandra for doing the boards, making sure we're on the air. And uh, you can tune in. Send me an email at greggf at primus.ca or 647-227-4734. Good night. See you sometime, Mom and Daisy. Connect with us to fall in love again. Love is in the air. Martes a las 8 de la noche. Los espero con la mejor música para volver a enamorarse. Love is on the air. El amor está al aire. Los espero. Porque desde el exterior también hacemos revolución. Ecuatorianas y ecuatorianos, ponte la camiseta y forma parte del movimiento Alianza País. Apoyemos a nuestro presidente, Rafael Corre, en este proceso de revolución ciudadana. Carmetízate desde el 18 de agosto en el Centro Comunitario San Lorenzo, 22 Wendelly Drive. Requisitos, trae cédula de identidad o pasaporte. No importa si está caducado, no falte, le esperamos. El programa de mediación comunitaria de San Lorenzo es una oportunidad de encontrar maneras positivas para lidiar con disputas familiares y en la comunidad. Visítenos los lunes de 5 a 7 pm en el 22 de Wendell Drive para obtener un encuentro con un experto que lo ayudará con su situación. Tenemos servicios de traducción al español disponible. Contacte al 647-227-4734 o a greggf.primus.ca. Este es un servicio gratuito y confidencial. 6 y 7 de septiembre se aproxima el evento que tanto esperamos. El chancho con los chalecos. Tenemos al guaso del puerto y el pandero de oro. 29 y 31 de Desde el mediodía hasta que las velas no ardan. Asado a la chilena. Empanadas chilenas. Del blanco y del otro. Palmemos cumbia hasta el amanecer. Con el sonido de la sonora Palacios. Patricio Farfán. Muchachita, muchachita, la pendejita con el Opinions given in the following program do not necessarily reflect